are going, as far as the can as far as the race, as far as a race, I knew way beyond, way before November seventh that Obama would win. There would be no reason for me, because I myself signed up thousands, literally thousands. I would get up in the morning and go downtown and I wouldn't leave until I had at least fifty votes on any given day. To get him elected. I think he would be appalled if they asked about your conduct. He would never want this. I truly believe he, he loves this country too. And and he would never want this kind of conduct. But you know this is this is your attitude. Your attitude back in nineteen eighty seven was your brother Joseph Jones, um, and I think there was even some cases where they were dropped or they investigated. I think she tried to vote for one of the relatives, too, or brothers, too, and I think they were dropped. But here's a case. Your brother gets charged with um, taking somebody else's property. Well, that's not a problem for Mullowise Richardson. That's not a problem that your brother got charged because Mullowise Richardson just, you know, I'm going to take the law into my own hands, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to threaten to kill the victim. So she doesn't testify against my brother, and that's what she did. So you get charged with intimidation. It's the ends justify the means. I'm going to get Obama elected, so I'll cheat. And again, I think he would be appalled by that. Just as he'd be appalled if asked about this. This is terrible. Yeah, you, well, your brother gets charged, so hey. That's not a problem. I'm just going to threaten the victim. That's what you did. The victim was so frightened, she didn't want to come in. They finally had to make a plea bargain to let you plead through this to me. You've got a couple of years probation. You also had a DUI around that same time. Your first offense is uh, you dri you're driving drunk again. You know, you don't care. I'm drunk. I'm going to get in the car and drive. Because I'm not always Richardson. I don't care about other people. I don't care if I'm going to go across the whole line and kill somebody. I'm not always Richardson. I, I take the law in my own hands. I do what I want. See? It's not about disrespecting you. You disrespected yourself. You would, you know, it's not about race or anything like that. It's about criminal activity. You're a criminal. You're just a common criminal. And what, what did you do then after you got put on probation? What did you do then? Back in 1988, you come back again. And of course, you're in the sole lounge. You knock the victim down. You hit, kick the victim in the back, face, and eye several times. You're convicted of that. But that's not enough. No, you beat up another victim in 1988, while on probation to me. Same place, beat him up. His court judge gave you 10 days, I gave you six months, and said you can serve time there, but you know, that doesn't stop there. Again, Meloise Richardson, she, uh, you know, claiming to be a victim in this case, you know, all the ways against her. But then you took the law into your own hands again in 1993. You go, you didn't have, I guess you didn't have the money, or I guess you just feel you didn't have to pay. You went into a place and stole. I'm Melody Richardson. I can drive drunk. My brother gets in trouble. I'll just intimidate the witness. If I don't like somebody in the bar, I beat him up, kick him into submission. If I don't have the money and I don't feel like paying for something, I'm Melody Richardson. I can just steal. And it's voting time. I'm supposed to be the guardian of the voting system. But hey, I'm Melody Richardson. I, I like President Obama. And that's fine. A lot of people like President Obama. You know, and they voted for him. They, they voted in fair and square. And Eloise Richardson, no, I'm going to take the law in my own hands. I'm going to use my position of trust in the Board of Elections, and I'm going to cheat. I'm going to vote absentee for myself. I'm going to vote personally for myself. Because I'm Eloise Richardson. I can do what I want. And my poor sister, who's in a coma, her name has to be dragged in court. That poor woman's been in a coma since 2003. I'm Eloise Richardson. I'm going to get some more votes for President Obama. And again, I think he was asked about this and he was appalled by your conduct. Nobody wants to be elected illegally. But you're Eloise Richardson. You think, hey, take the law in my own hands. I'm going to vote for her. I'm going to cheat. Because I'm Eloise Richardson. I've conducted my life like that. You know, Ms. Richardson, this, this whole concept of one, um, one person, one vote, is a sacred thing. It's what separates us from countries like Venezuela, you know, Cuba, Iran, you know. It, it's, a, it's a sacred right that we all have to vote. We all should have our one vote. But you know, if you look around this courtroom, we look around this courtroom, all the people in this courtroom, um, you diluted the vote. In 2012, you did it. Um, count 
2007, it was 2011, you missed four elections, 2011 you did it. Um, you did it this past election, multiple times, multiple years. You diluted the vote. So you, you, you've stolen, just like you steal from stores, just like you disrupt the justice system, just like you beat people up. You, again, because you're Melouise Richardson, you stole a percentage of my vote, a percentage of everybody's vote in this courtroom. When you're supposed to be the guardian, you're supposed to be the lifeguard, you're supposed to be making sure that this election process is fair. But you stole part of my vote. You stole a percentage of my right to vote. And your response was completely arrogant. I mean, you were on television. Arrogant. No remorse. Today, arrogant. No remorse. You, this, is not, this is not a persecution of you because of your race. This isn't a persecution of you because you're a Democrat. Again, I know Democrats and, uh, and, uh, and, and Republicans alike. You know, Tim Burke, head of the Democratic Party, honorable guy. One of the best lawyers in town, honest guy, great guy. You know, I know a lot of great Democrats. They, they, they're appalled by this country. Just like the Republicans are, too. This has to do with Democrat and Republican. It has to do with our country, our Constitution. Um, and again, your response. Well, I think President Obama deserved to get rid of him. That's why. I, I mean, that's, and that's appalling. I think, and I think he would be appalled by that, too. Um, you mean you don't care? You don't follow the laws? You just whatever you want to do? And, you know, there's been some comment, too, you know, well, you know, and I think people alluded to it, people alluded to this all the time, well, you know, it's, you know, that on a national scale, um, it's a couple votes. You see it's, uh, go back here, you know, of course you were allowed the, the prosecutor was, was being fair to you, they in return for, you, for admitting this, and I'm going to be fair to you, too, I mean, I, the fact that you were willing to admit some counts, I'll take that into consideration. And the prosecutor did too, he dropped some counts, but, you know, going through it again, you know, count one, two votes, one for yourself and another for yourself. Um, it's a couple of votes there. Count five, 2012 again, that was your sister, illegal vote there. Um, count six, four years ago, it was your sister again, illegal vote, and then 2011, and count seven, 2011. Correct the reg, I said 2007, but it was count seven, 2011. Back in our new support election, you did it too, for your sister. Now, you know, some people might say, well, this is, you know, this is just a few votes here and there. And there's been other people indicted all across this country. And there's been some commentators saying, well, you know, um, they're just taking this too seriously. This is not that big of a deal. It's just a few votes here and there. Well, that is, I mean, that is, is, it's foolish, foolish thought. This is important. This is important. Um, this is the foundation of our country, the foundation of our democracy. Democracies are very delicate, very, very delicate. And it's almost like, it's, it's not a little thing. It's, it, that's, it's silly, it's silly thought, silly comment for people to think this is just a little thing. It's like a guy coming home uh, to his house and seeing a few little insects on the ground and a few little termites and thinking, you know, what's a couple termites? And brush them under the rug, no big deal. I'm not going to worry about it. And in about a month or two, it's suddenly a million and then a billion termites, so it's gnawing away at the foundation of his house. Suddenly his house falls down. Well, it's, it's the same with the democracy. You allow, especially a guardian like you, you allow a guardian of the election process, and you allow the election process to go, and you don't take it seriously. I don't take, set an example here and take this seriously. I allow just... I, I say, well, it was just a few votes. I'm not going to worry about it. I just allow you to walk out of here with a slap on the hand. Pretty soon, it's a few more votes, and it's more votes, and, it's, and it starts to gnaw away at the foundation of this very democracy. Uh, and, and, it, and the important thing about this, too, is perception. Perception's important. Um, the reason why terrorists blow up buildings and, and set off bombs at uh, marathons, uh, the Boston Marathon, 
they know they're not going to bring down the country with one bomb or with two buildings. They're not going to bring down the country. The public does it causes perception problem. People in our country start to feel uncomfortable. They start to question their safety. And when that happens in a democracy, especially any kind of democracy, which is very delicate, it can bring a democracy down. And they know that. The same with voter, voter fraud. It, there's a perception in this country that there was a lot more fraud than maybe there was. And they, there's, there, there's people being elected that shouldn't be elected. And uh, that's bad. It affects the economy. It affects our whole psyche of our nation. It's not good. It's not good to have that perception. And that's why I have to come down hard on this. This is, this is not a little thing. It's not a minor thing. This is what our country is based on, free elections. And you know, there are elections that are decided by a few votes. There was one out by me, the mayor of North Bend, elected by one vote last year. There was um, a judge's election recently, controversial election in juvenile court. There's not many votes separating those two candidates. Not many votes separating those two candidates. Every vote is important. And you stole the percentage of our vote. Um, it's it just, it's just, it's just beyond me that anybody would, would, would think that this conduct is appropriate or any kind of voter fraud is appropriate. I leave in this courtroom, leave politely and quietly. Any comments, any screams, any yells out in the hallway will have you brought back and sent to jail for six months. As simple as that. And that's the sentence the court. Court's adjourned. Thank you, Judge. sentence, if you would, and, and what Judge Ruhlman had to say, and your own views about this longtime poll worker and what she did. Well, um, as I stated, the Board of Elections did not have an opinion as to the sentencing, but that was up to the court. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to be sure that the court understood uh, the extent of the investigation that we had had to go into in order to uh, uncover the situation. And the fact that she was a long-term poll worker is actually very heartbreaking for us. She's one of our own. She's one of ours. She's a poll worker for a long time. She was in a position of trust, as all of our poll workers are. We have over 3,000 poll workers. We trust and care for all of them because of how hard they work for us. So while this is a heartbreaking and personally sad day for Ms. Richardson and her family and for us at the board because of the fact of her being a poll worker, I also think there's a positive message that comes from this. And that message is that the um, integrity of elections in Hamilton County has been maintained. And that all allegations of voter suppression and voter fraud are investigated with due diligence by the Board of Elections. We do our job, we do our job well. We take our job very seriously. There's equal justice here today, and there's only one vote per voter. And that we want everyone to feel that confidence in the system and that we will follow through and do the investigations that we need to do on everyone, even one of our own, as a board. It, so again, it, we think it's very sad for her personally. We're sorry for that. But again, we believe that the integrity of elections in Hamilton County have been maintained. Amy, did you take anything away from her statement where she seemed to feel like, you know, there wasn't adequate training and, and the list, you know, there was never a list? You know, I was a criminal defense attorney for well over 10 years myself, so I understand that when she was standing there, um, she probably had a lot of conflicting emotions, so I don't wish to make a personal statement as to her and what, what she said about her training. We stand by our training. We train our poll workers very well, and we're very proud of that training. We're very proud of our poll workers. Thank you. Thank you.